So, Charlie, what is your view on death? Okay, so um, it's really interesting because like all I get from him right now is that it, it's easy. It's easy. Um, basically, what's the big deal? Sorry, I should have put my phone on silence. Um, basically, what's the big deal? What's the big deal about death? Um, and And I guess what he's saying is what makes it difficult. And, you know, um, it's really interesting because um, I just recently put together like a, a page on my, on my here, I'll, I'll make sure we see him too. Um, I put together a page on my, on my website about um, death and dying and the different tools that I have been talking about over the years when your pet dies or or, you know, uh, either a sudden death or getting older and getting ready to die. And um, it made me so aware again, like how many points of views we have about that and how um, crazy it is for us in so many ways. And we are so, um, we get so sucked into like this reality's point of view, which really is that you have to be sad you have to be mourning you have to do all this in a certain way there's not a lot of freedom in that and i really like it better if we were to look at like what what could we really create here that would create more freedom for us like you know you could choose to be sad but you could also choose to celebrate the passing of your pet what if you really had completely um like really no uh point of view about it what would that create for you if you no longer had a point of view and so when charlie says well death is easy <laughs> he doesn't mean that everything that dies it's like it it sometimes doesn't look so easy when an animal dies you know it it sometimes looks like wow it is a process you know and and like for example uh, not too long ago i held a little i held a little guinea pig that was dying and i was just starting to run some of the body processes that we have in access consciousness to to really assist this little critter in having more ease with the process but it took a very long time at least that's what it sort of felt like you know and this little guy just kept hanging in and kept hanging in and then finally he let go but it was so interesting because it was like he needed to be um he needed to be sure that the kids were okay and when the kids came running and were laughing that's when he died which that was so interesting to me too it's um you know animals do also have a sense of you know what it is that they're here to contribute and in this little guinea pig's case it was the kids so he really had lived a very long life, but he was also wanting to make sure that 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 part of it was covered. Um, so, so when Charlie says easy, he he is not talking about. He's just talking about what if the whole process didn't have that intensity that we are giving it. What if there was a different way of looking at it? So what else on death? <laughs> he says, you can never be ready for it. <laughs> Which is so funny because, you know, we, we try to, we try to prepare ourselves. And how often do you also do that? You know, your, your pet is getting older. Charlie, actually, I just looked at it the other day. He's approximately nine years old I don't know for sure because when I adopted him he was approximately one so I don't know what month he was born in exactly and it's not really relevant um, and I have actually never really asked him well I could ask him what well, we okay October so apparently he was born in October all right so
Oh, so another part of the preparation um, that that he was saying is earlier is, or he just sort of reminded me of that is that um, what if what if it wasn't about preparing for it, and what if you could just allow yourself to be present when this is getting closer or when it's also occurring? Like, if you were totally present with your animal, what could what could this be like for both of you? Um, would you in this moment then be a contribution to your animal and also vice versa? And um, so, Charlie, what um, what about euthanasia? Is that a choice, he says. It's a choice. So, um, okay, so, so the interesting part about euthanasia he's saying is that um like he's basically saying when it happens against the animal's wishes that that is that creates um and that creates like a, a a sort of a point of view for the next life of the of the animal so um sometimes so is it that an animal then has a point of view about, yes, so they then have a point of view about euthanasia. So if you didn't, um, if so maybe actually it would be very helpful to, if you have an animal that is closer to that, like destroy and uncreate whatever they have decided about euthanasia, whatever they have decided about death and whatever they have decided about the process of dying and destroy and uncreate all of that. Um, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you haven't heard this particular part, this is the clearing statement of access consciousness. So with this clearing statement, we're asking the energy to go back to wherever the issue, the, the point of view was created and basically undo it there. So it doesn't matter if that point of view was created now or 10 minutes ago or 100 million years ago. It really does not matter because time is not part of this equation at all. So it just goes to wherever that was created and destroys and uncreates it. So um, so in that moment then, if your animal doesn't have a point of view about euthanasia, then it just becomes a choice. And I remember very clearly, for example, when my cat was dying and she was in her 20s, um, she she really did not want to be euthanized and it was very very clear it was like i do not wish to do this in that way i want to do this on my own and the one big gift that i got from her was as i was with her while she was dying and you know i had to i had reactions to it because to me it was like really difficult to watch it and yet she was saying get over yourself this is easier than giving birth and I was like, oh, and she had given birth early on. So she knew what she was talking about. But it was really astounding to me because I I didn't expect her to to say that. And I didn't expect her to to kind of even scold me on it and be like, get over yourself, you know. Um so so what if really also when we see our pets quote unquote suffering? What if we did ask them a question? Are you suffering? Is this difficult for you? Um, would you like to be euthanized? And even when she was in the throes of dying, I did have a moment where I said, do you want me to rush you to the vet and get you euthanized? And she, she was able to really very well say to you that, you know, you should mind your own business in a very different kind of a way that I'm not going to say now. But um, that was her like, hey, no, you know, I will not do this. And I was like, okay, cool. So I have to now just be totally present with this, be totally here, be totally willing to just, yeah, be present with her. And then it was really beautiful also to just be there with her. And um, and we had a beautiful day together too, um, that last day of her life. I um we did a lot of like very sweet things um, and it was really, really beautiful to say goodbye in that way too. And then in the evening, that's when she chose to leave. Um, 
So there are different ways that this is a possibility when, when our pets are when our pets are going through that and when our pets are dying, um, really, truly, what if we had a different way of being with that? What if there was really, truly a different way that we could choose also together with our pets? So, um, and, and truly, what if there was nothing ever wrong? You know, if you're saying like, oh, I didn't ask my pet if it wanted to be euthanized and is that going to create a problem now for my pet in the future? Please don't go there. Everything you've decided with that and everywhere you're going into the guilt of or the wrongness of you about this, will you destroy and uncreate all that, please, now? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So really, truly, what if it was really now creating a different future with the information that you have and just allow yourself to truly see what might be required, what might be desired, and what makes this ease for all of you. And honoring what the pet is choosing and also honoring yourself in the process too. Um, some things may not work for you in the way that your pet is choosing it too. So, um, and I know I've been talking a lot here, but I, I usually take the energy that Charlie gives me and then I extrapolate. Because what I always say also with animal communication, you know, it's like we say a picture is worth a, a thousand words. And I always say, well, the energy is worth a thousand pictures because the energy has no limitations in what it is delivering. And you you can use many words to describe an energy and that's what I am doing here. I'm describing the energy that I am perceiving. And, um, and Charlie usually will correct me if I, if I stray, of course. <laughs> and if I start saying things that aren't correct, you know, um, I will usually get a little, um, hit over the head by him. So, <laughs> um, so, Okay, um, what else, Charlie? And and thank you guys for watching and thank you for being there. And um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I love you guys. So, Charlie, what um, what else about death that we haven't talked about? Oh, <laughs> he's saying, how many times have you had your same dog again and you haven't acknowledged it? So even in this lifetime, have you had maybe two dogs where, or two animals, two pets where you thought, oh, they're just like so-and-so. They're just like, well, did you ever ask if they are so-and-so? And, -so? and um, I know that Charlie has been with me already more than once in my lifetime. So... Um, So what if you actually also acknowledge that as a possibility? The being of your pet does not die. The body disintegrates. The body basically um, changes its energy, changes its form, but the being stays available. So the being can pick another body at any given time. And so what if you also acknowledge that and also allowed this animal to possibly come into your life again, if you both choose it. Um, and I've had some really, really fun experiences from people with that, that literally have immediately knew that this was the dog that they've had before and immediately knew that this was an animal that they have had relationships with in the past. And it was so clear to them. And um, And what if that wasn't like, so weird what if that was actually a possibility and what if you could even could ask for it what if that was an easy request that you could make and see if your if your pet is willing to also willing to come to you and please you know don't make this about oh is my pet going to choose me again you know what if my pet doesn't like me and doesn't want to live with me again it's not often about that sometimes it's also that your pet may have another job that they have to do so it's not always about you or about um, the shortcomings of you. 
I have to tell you this. Uh, I know a lot of you want to believe that you are wrong. You know, this is one of the staples of, of this reality and of you that you always go into the wrongness of you. What if you didn't have to do that this time? What if you could just acknowledge that maybe now is not the time or maybe later is the time or maybe it's done and over with. You know, when Baba left my cat, it was like, wow, she was gone, 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 gone. And there wasn't even a an inkling of like, hey, we'll see you again. Um, and the fun thing is, of course, you can always connect with the being no matter what. Um, it doesn't have to be in a body for you to connect to it and you can always connect to it. So that's the other beauty of it. You can stay energetically connected all the time. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be the body that is limiting that relationship. So um, what else, Charlie? What else about death and dying? What other parts of this? Hmm. What is that energy? Can you say this again, please, in a different way, maybe that is a bit easier for me to... Um, yeah, it has something to do with the the drama that we have around it again so like really stressing again that he um so whatever the meaning is that you have on death and dying what if you were willing to destroy and uncreate that please Times a gazillion, right and wrong, good and bad, put and puck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What, what if really truly you could let go of whatever it means to you when your pet dies? Whatever that that is that gets attached to it. What if that no longer was there? What if you could really truly completely let go of it and and not have any meaning attached to it? Um, what would that create and what would that create for you and what would that create also for your pet and would it make everything easier and really truly um, the um, the thing I'm really getting here from him again is just what if we really could see this differently what if there was way more ease in all of it and um, and and yeah, the meaning part of it I get is a big is a big portion. So yeah, what else is possible here? Truly, truly, um, for living together with our animals and um, honoring them when they are alive, and also honoring them when they are dying, and and not making it more significant than us living with them. We make the death part oftentimes so much more significant than the fun times that we have with them and the daily life that we have with them. Um, yes, their passing is obviously creating something different because all of a sudden we no longer have them in the same way in our lives. That is correct. But what if that didn't have meaning in the same way? And what if there was just a shift and we could still basically have a connection with them, but no longer is it based on them being in this body? Um, so really, truly, what else is possible with all of this that we haven't yet acknowledged? Mm -hmm.